morning and welcome to our virtual class in Thesis Writing 1. So today is October 15, 2021, and we are already in week 7 of our trimester. So let's go back and let's discuss the essential elements of the research methodology. So last week we have done discussing about research design. And we say there are two research design, quantitative and qualitative. For quantitative, we have descriptive research, comparative research, correlation research, and causal research. Whereas in a qualitative, we have experimental research. Now, uh, we will be discussing about the population sample and sampling technique. And actually, this are the contents or the essential elements of your chapter. So let us now proceed. Okay, at the end of the session, the student should be able to differentiate population from sample. You should be able to determine the appropriate sample size for the target population. Determine the sampling method to use in your thesis. Okay, so when you conduct research about a group of people, it is fairly possible to collect data from every person in that group. Instead, you select a sample. The sample is the group of individuals who will actually participate in the research. To draw valid conclusions from your results, you have to carefully decide how you will select a sample that is representative of the group as a whole. There are two types of sampling methods. <clears throat> probability sampling and non-probability sampling. When we say probability sampling, it involves random selection, allowing you to make statistical inferences about the whole group. On the other hand, when you say non-probability sampling, it involves non-random selection based on convenience or other criteria, allowing you to easily collect initial data. So you should clearly explain how you selected your sample in the methodology section of your thesis. So population versus, versus sample. First, you need to understand the difference between a population and a sample and identify the target population of your research. When we say population, it is the entire group that you want to draw conclusions about. The sample is the specific group of individuals that you will collect data from. So the population can be, can be defined in terms of geographical location, in terms of age, income, and many other characteristics. To illustrate, <clears throat> it can be very broad or quite narrow. Maybe you want to make inferences about the whole adult population of your country. Maybe your research focuses on customers of a certain company, patients with a specific health condition, or students in a single school. It is important to carefully define your target population according to the purpose and practicalities of your project. Now you will clearly see here in the uh, graphical representation, this is the population composed of uh, a total number. So there are total number of population and the sample is only selected from this population. So not, not everyone will be considered as your sample. You just select. So out of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, or let's say out of 15, you will only select five. So this five will represent the population later on. 
the sampling frame is the actual list of individuals that the sample will be drawn from. Ideally, it should include the entire target population and nobody who is not part of that population. For example, you're doing research on working conditions at company X. So your population is all 1,000 employees of the company. So for example, population, ilan lahat. Since the com company X has 1,000 employees, so your sampling frame is the company's HR database, which lists the names and contact details of this 1,000 employee. Yun ang iyong piyatang na sampling frame from which you will select your sample. Okay, population is the entire. So when we talk about sample size, the number of individuals in your sample depends on the size of the population and how precisely you want the results to represent the population as a whole. So you can use a sample size calculator to determine how big your sample should be. So sample size calculator, available yan sa internet. There are many sample size calculator available in the internet, which you can use. In general, the larger the sample size, the more accurately and confidently you can make inferences about the whole population. Sabi na dito, kapag mas marami ang sample size mo, mas malaking chance na yung confidence mo about the accuracy and about your inferences, interpretation, ay close yan sa reality, close to the whole population. So, ano-ano ba ang ways of determining the statistic of the sample size? So, ang tawag rito yung, what is the acceptable sample size? An important task of the researcher is to determine the acceptable sample size. The larger the sample, the more reliable is the result of the study. Hence, it is advisable to have a sample large enough to yield reliable results. So factors to consider in determining the sample size, homogeneity of the population. The higher the degree of homogeneity of the population, the smaller is the sample size that can be utilized. So kapag homogeneous, halos pare-pareho naman ang population, ang characteristics nila, kahit konti, the smaller sample can be utilized. Kasi nga homogeneous pare-pareho. The degree of precision desired by the Researcher, the larger the sample size, the higher is the precision of accuracy of results. Correct. So, kunyari, sampo ang population. Kapag isa lang ba ang sample, ano ang precision na it will represent the entire 10 population? Paano kung gawin natin 3 out of 10, 5 out of 10, 7 out of 10? So habang dumadami yung ating sample, mas nagiging precise yung ating results. Nagiging accurate. Kasi 5 out of 10, 50%, pwede na yan. It will represent 50% of the entire population. Maganda na yan. Acceptable sample size yan. So the larger the sample size, the higher is the precision or accuracy of results. Types of sample procedure. Probability sampling utilizes smaller sample sizes than non-probability sampling. So, di ba meron tayong dalawa? Probability at saka ng probability. Kung sabi lang dito, probability sampling utilizes smaller sample sizes than non-probability sampling. Yeah. Considerations in determining the sample size. So, ipipresent ko lang sa inyo yung napakaraming uh, paraan para mag-compute ng sample size. First, sample sizes as small as 30 are generally adequate to ensure that the sampling distribution of the mean will approximate the normal curve. Sabi ni Schott, 1990. However, hindi niya sinabi kung 30 out of ilan. Ito ba 30 out of 100? 30 out of 1,000? 30 out of 10,000. So, 
Ibig sabihin, kung ito ay 30 out of 100, this is a good sample. E paano kung 30 out of 1,000? Paliit na lang paliit. So, di ba sabi natin kanina, the higher the sample, the more accurate and precise the result. And, and the lesser the sample size, and the less ang accuracy, less ang precision, we cannot use the result to represent the entire population. Number two, when the total population is equal to or less than 100, the same number may serve as the sample size. This is called universal sampling. Correct? So, ibig sabihin ko, ang pag-aaralan nyo ay, uh, let's say, the job satisfaction of uh, employees ng isang kumpanya, eh, less than 100 yung empleyado. Consider the entire population as your sample. Universal sampling yun. So, tandaan kapag isang daan or less ang ating population, lahat kukuha ni natin sila 100. And this is called universal sampling. Ito, this is the Slobis formula ang aking may recommend. The Slobis formula is used to compute for a sample size. So, given the equation N, which is the sample size, is equal to capital N, which is the population size, all over 1 plus N times E, or desired margin of error, squared. Ngayon, pwede nyo mano-mano ito or pwede nga yung gamit, gumamit kayo ng sample size generator sa internet. For example, the sample size of the population is 8,000 at 2% margin of error. So, tingnan natin. And given the formula, n is equal to population all over 1 plus population times margin of error squared. Substitute the formula, n is uh, population is 8,000 all over 1 plus 8,000 times 2% margin of error, 0.02 is squared. So, ito na yan. Simplifying the equation, we arrive at 8,000 over 4.2 or a total of 1,905. So, ang population natin is 8,000. So, what is the acceptable sample size? Using uh, Slovis formula, we arrived at 1,905. So, we have to uh, use this uh, sample respondents, 1,905 out of 8,000 para sa ating research using Slovin's formula. So according to Gay, the following are the acceptable sizes for the different types of research. For a descriptive research, 10 to 20% of the population may be required. In correlational research, 30 subjects or respondents. Comparative, 15 subjects per group. Experimental design, 15 to 30 subjects per group. Okay. If you want to use uh, 10 to 20% of the population, you mentioned you are following gay, 1977. One more is Kalmorin's formula. So, medyo complicated ang kanyang formula, complex uh, formula. Yan. Where SS is the sample size, N is the population size, V is the standard value 2.58 of 1% level of probability with 99% reliability. Sample error and the largest possible proportion. So medyo mahirap pa rin itong uh, compute. But the uh, example is here. So for a uh, parameter of 800, meaning population of 800, using Kalmarin, 124. So closely related issues in terms of percentage. Kanina, let's look at... Uh, dito kay uh, Slobins. 8,000. Itong 1,905. 
di ba parang mga 20% na rin siya of 8,000. So remember, ang sabi ni uh, Gay, So this is 20%, almost 20%. Katulad nga na sabi ni Gay, 10 to 20% may be required. So halos pare-pareho lang din, equivalent naman sila ng percentage. Tingnan natin yung kay Calmorin, out of 800, 124. So a little less than 20%. Because 20% will be 200. So this is just about, uh, ilan to, 125. So, mga 15%. So, between 10 to 20% pa rin siya. So, according to Pollock and Deck, 2004, two kinds of sampling. Probability, non-probability. Pag sinabing probability sampling, this is a type of sampling in which all members of the entire population are given a chance of being selected. This is also termed as scientific sampling and mostly used in quantitative research. So, tandaan natin ha, probability sampling. So, ito ay tawag dito ay scientific kasi may sinusunod na uh, proseso. Okay? At ginagamit to sa quantitative research. Four types, simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, cluster sampling, and systematic sampling. On the other hand, pag siya namin yung non-probability sampling, it is the process of selecting respondents in which not all members of the entire population are given a chance of being selected as samples, also termed as non-scientific sampling. Kung yung kanina, scientific ito, non-scientific. And mostly used in qualitative research. So, quantitative, we use probability sampling. Qualitative, we use non-probability sampling. For example, convenience sampling, voluntary sampling, purposive sampling, and snowball sampling. Dami yan. So, walo yan. Apat na probability, apat na non-probability sampling. So, isa-isahin natin yan. So, simple random sampling. Ayan. Unang-una is simple random sampling. In a simple random sample, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. So, the sampling frame should include the whole population. To conduct this type of sampling, you can use tools like random number generators, or other techniques that are based entirely on chance. Example, you want to select a simple random sample of 100 employees of company X. So, 100 na kailangan natin. You assign a number to every employee in the company database from 1 to 1,000. Bakit 1 to 1,000? Kasi 1,000 ang iyong sampling frame. They are the total employees of company X. And then, use a random number generator to select 100 numbers. So, random number generator to select 100 numbers. Ano ba yung number generator? Ayan. Anong example nito? Fishbowl technique. Ay, di ba, kunyari, sa may party-party tayo, ah, o lagay lahat ng pangalan sa isang strip of paper, irolyo, tapos ihulaw sa fishbowl. And then, alugin yan, pagkatapos magdodraw ng pangalan. Ganun din ang gagawin sa fishbowl technique sa random sampling. O kung may 1,000 tayong empleyado, 1,000 names sa strips of paper, bibilot, and then hulog lahat, at alukayin, kukuha tayo ng 100. So, everyone has the chance to be selected. Yan ay fishbowl. Okay. Roulette, Will. So, uh, dito sa internet, merong mga application na ililista mo lahat yung pangalan. Tapos, when you press the uh, 
button, iikot siya parang ruleta, and then pag tumapat yung pangalan, kasama siya sa sample. Ito namang table na random numbers. Yan. So from uh, 1 to 100 ito, naka-rearrange. So pipili ka ngayon kung gusto mo per row or per, per row or per column. So kunyari, uh, napili natin 5R. So row 5 pala, R5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Itong row na ito ang ating pipiliin. So employee number 22, 80, 18, 82, 54, 32, 84, 16, 46, 88. So nakapili na tayo ng 10. O so, yung susunod nating set. Kunyari, ito yung first 100. Uh, kasi 1,000 yan. I-divide natin into 10 batches. O yung unang batch, unang batch, ayan. O yung susunod, 101 to 200. O lang, nagdagdagan lang natin ng uh, 100 yan. Okay, sabihin naman natin, column 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. O since nasa 100 to 200 na tayo, 139, 147, employee 178, 137, 184, 163, 115, 189, 177, and 141. So this is our second batch of 10. So meron na tayong 20. O we do the same. O yari, sa susunod, ano naman? Row 9. Sa susunod, Column 2. O, oh, ito, column 2. So, ganito lang ang paggamit ng random number table. Eh, pinakamadali, random number generators, eh, sorry, sa uh, internet. May mga random number generators. So, kung anong number, so 1 to 1,000, i-click lang kung uh, yung random number generator, sasabihin niya kung ano ba ang first, anong number ang first, anong second. Hanggang maarapin kayo sa 1,000. And that is probability sampling, which is simple random sampling. Marami nagkakamali na ang akala. Pag simple random, kung ano lang yung maseselect nila, random. So may nagdadaang mga, ano yan, na mga, kunyari, pasahero ng jeepney, ah, kailangan ko ng uh, sampung uh, sample. Ang gagamitin ko is simple random. So, mamimili ako ng isa. Oh, ikaw, isa. Oh, ikaw, ikalawa. Hindi yon Mali yon Ang simple random sampling being a scientific uh, sample, uh, scientific technique, kailangan muna ng entire population, listahan. And from there, mamimili tayo isa-isa. Using uh, fishball, role, hindi na role, marami. Table of random numbers or random number generators. For example, kukuha tayo ng uh, feedback sa residents ng barangay 10 ng ating uh, city. O ano ang sampling frame? Eh yung residents ng barangay 10. O kukunin natin sa barangay, sino-sino po ba yung resident dito sa ating barangay? O kung nangyari, ang population sa barangay nyo, 2,500 ibibigyan kayo ng 2,500 na list of names. Kapag meron ka ng sampling frame, doon ka na magsisimple random sampling. So, I hope, maliwanag yan ha? Kasi marami pa rin nagkakamali dyan. This is the most popular, simple random. Yan. Kapag simple, oh yan, every, ang tawag lang dito, every uh, member of the population has equal chance. So, dito sa sample na ito, ito, simple random, yan, yan ang nabunot na numbers. Ikalawa, systematic sampling. It is similar to simple random sampling, but it's usually slightly easier to conduct. Every member of the population is listed with a number, but instead of randomly generating numbers, individuals are chosen at regular intervals. So may interval. For example, all employees of the company are listed in alphabetical order. From the first 10 numbers, you randomly select a starting point. So first 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. O pwede kang mag, uh, 
A simple random din. Mag-fishball ka. Ano ba ang uunahin ko? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Kunyari, nabunot mo is number 6. So, from number 6, di ba, uh, sa 1,000, kailangan natin kumuha ng isang daan. So, from number 6, every 10th person on the list is selected. So, 6, 16, 26, 36, 46, 56, 66, 76, etc. Hanggang sa makabuo tayo ng 100 people. So, mas maganda ito kasi hindi ka na isa-isang bumunot. From your list, ang pipiliin mo lang ay kung ano yung unang number. Kunyari, yung unang number na nabunot ay 3. O di, 3, and then every 10th person. Bakit 10th person? Kasi 1,000 divided by 100 is equal to 10. So, ang interval niya ay 10. Yan yun, ha? Yan. So, itong interval. So, from this day, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 na 15 na population, pukuha tayo ng 5. So, 15 divided by 5 is 3. So, dapat every 3. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3. O, ano bang titignan natin? O, number 2. So, 1, 2. And then we count 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So, every third is included in our systematic sampling. Again, ginagamit ito sa quantitative research method. Narinig nyo to, I'm sure. Actually, napag-aralan nyo nito sa inyong uh, statistics. Stratified something. Ano naman stratified? It involves dividing the population into subpopulations that may differ in important ways. It allows you to draw more precise conclusion by ensuring that every subgroup is properly represented in the sample. Uh, so to use this sampling method, you divide the population into subgroups called strata based on relevant characteristics. So, yeah. For example, uh, ang ating research ay about consumer buying behavior. Pag-aaralan natin, uh, sino ba ang impulsive buyer? Ang lalaki ba or babae? So, ang ating sample ay i-divide natin into strata or according to gender. We have the male and female. So, i-divide natin sila. So, for example, doon sa ating, uh, ating 1,000 employees, tingnan natin. Uh, so, after ma-divide na natin population, you calculate how many people should be sampled from each subgroup. Then you use random or systematic sample to select a sample from each group. Okay. But using stratified sampling, gagamit ka ng strata and then combination with simple random or systematic sampling. Example natin. So yung sa ating 1,000 employees, the company has 800 female employees and 200 male employees. So you want to ensure that the sample reflects the gender balance of the company. So you sort the following, the population into two strata based on gender. So meron kong female, meron kong male. Then you use random sampling on each group. Selecting 80 women and 20 men which gives you a representative sample of 100 people. O, diba? So kung 800 and 200, dapat 800 divided by 1,000, that is 80, uh, 800, that is 80%. 200 divided by 1,000, that's 20%. Dapat, kung yung sample is 100 people, dapat 80% are female, 20% are male. And since uh, by number, mas madali natin itong makukumpute kasi 
80% of 1,000 is 800, uh, 200. So, the 80 and 20. As long as there is a balance. So, we can also stratify it according to uh, position. So, supervisory and managerial level, uh, rank, uh, a rank and file. So, dalawa, isang supervisory, managerial, at yung isa ay rank and file. So, stratified. So, meron tayong uh, groupings, strata. So, again, pag stratified sampling, stratified, and then use random sampling. So, nakakuha ka, alam mo na 80 women at saka 20 men, o sino dun sa 800 women. Again, you have the list of 800 female employees, you have the list of 200 male employees, so using random sampling or scientific sampling, you identify. Yan. So iba ang sampling technique, iba ang sample size, sampling technique, tsaka sample identification. Ha? Sample size, kukunin mo, ilan ba ang acceptable sample? So paano ka kukunin ng respondents? You will use sampling technique. And to identify uh, mismong sample, you will apply the particular technique. So, stratified. For example, ito, male and female. So, ang male ay 6, ang female ay 9. So, therefore, uh, equal uh, ratio and proportion, kukuha ka ng dalawa sa lalaki, tatlo sa babae. Using this one, it use random sampling. Okay. Last sa probability sampling uh, techniques ay ang cluster sampling. Cluster. Pag sinabi natin cluster, it involves dividing the population into subgroups. Uli, pero hindi istrata. But each group should have similar characteristics to the whole sample. Instead of sampling individuals from each subgroup, you randomly select the entire subgroup. Okay? So, kanina sa stratified, nakuha natin yung strata, and then we randomly select. Kapag cluster, i-divide natin into subgroups, and then we select each subgroup as the sample. Kaya nga, cluster sampling. If it is practically possible, you might include every individual from each sample cluster. If the cluster themselves are large, you can also sample individuals from within each cluster using one of the techniques discussed previously. This method is good for dealing with large and dispersed populations, but there is more risk of error in the sample as there could be substantial differences between clusters. It is difficult to guarantee that the sample clusters are generally representative of the whole population. Example natin. The company has offices in 10 cities across the country, all with roughly the same number of employees in similar roles. So you don't have the capacity to travel to every office to collect your data. So you use random sampling to select three offices. And these are your clusters. So sabihin natin, uh, how many offices Sabi natin one office in one city. So there are 10 offices. So from there, you select using random sampling or scientific uh, sampling. Select three offices. So three clusters. So the, since all of them have the same number of employees in similar roles, these three clusters can represent the entire population. Okay? For example, sabihin nyo, um, magsasurvey kayo dito sa ating city. O ilang barangays ba ang composition ng city? O, siguro mga 20 barangays. O, i-cluster natin siya. Pili tayo ng, let's say, dun sa top 3 na highly populated. O, yun ang tatlong cluster natin. O kaya, isang... Uh, yung top, 
middle, or bottom. Yeah. So, yun ang cluster sampling. At pag sinabi clus cluster, the entire cluster. Kung malaki, let's say, ang pinipili natin eh, cluster sampling, no? Uh, gusto natin dun sa pinakamaraming top residence, top population ng residence. So, kunyari, tatlong barangay, top three. O, yun ang ating cluster sample. Eh, masyado pa rin malaki. O, di we apply uh, random sampling or scientific sampling. So, listahan ng taga barangay. Let's say, ang top three ay barangay 2, 5, tsaka 10. O, lahat ng residence ng barangay 2, lahat ng residence ng barangay 5, lahat ng residence ng barangay uh, 10. Ilan ba ang ating uh, sample, acceptable sample? Siyempre, acceptable sample galing sa entire population. So, kunyari, ang population ay 8,000 using uh, slow beans, 1,900. So, pipili tayo ng 1,900, 5 na tao from barangay 2, barangay 5, and barangay 10. Okay? Yeah, so kinluster natin siya. So five clusters at namili tayo ang napili natin yung cluster 2 at cluster 4. So sila ang ating magiging cluster sample at kung masyado silang marami, kukuha pa rin tayo for each cluster ng sample, maliit na sample. Non-probability sampling, birang gamitin to for an undergraduate thesis. So, normally, pag ganito, pag case study, not for thesis. Case study, yeah, pwede yan. So, pag sinabi non-probability sampling, uh, kabalik ka rin yan ng probability sampling. So, first is convenience sampling. A convenience sampling simply includes the individuals who happen to be most accessible to the researchers. So, this is an easy and expensive way to gather initial data. But there is no way to tell if the sample is representative of the population. So it cannot produce generalizable research results. So, kung magpipisis tayo, dapat generalizable. So, kapag gumamit ka nito ng non-probability sampling, which is used in the qualitative, so hindi siya generalizable. The results will only be good to that particular sample. So, you are researching opinions about student support services in your university. So, after each of your classes, you ask your fellow students, your classmates, to complete a survey on the topic. This is a convenient way to gather data. But as you only survey students taking the same classes as you, at the same level, the sample is not representative of all the students at your university. So, instead, when you can use ng probability sampling, so, kunyari, first, second, third, fourth, i-cluster mo sila according to your level. And from that cluster, you apply uh, random or scientific sampling. Or, uh, strati pwede rin kasi stratify yun eh. Stratify according to your level. So, pag ating mas appropriate dito, balance, may representative lahat ng year level, Use stratified. Kasi pag cluster, di ba sabi natin, mamimili lang isang cluster. Kaya kung napili mo ay first year, wala pang gaano exposure yan sa support services. So ang cluster na napili mo, first year, medyo, again, hindi na naman siya representative of the world. So yan ang convenience. Convenient para sa researcher. O, itong researcher, Convenient sa kanya, yung pinakamalapit lang, yun ang pipiliin niyang uh, respondents. Okay? So, pwede niyo mapili lahat lalaki, lahat babae, or ito, 80% ay lalaki over 20% ng babae. Which, hindi naman yun ang prorated, ang percentage distribution ng sample. Second is voluntary response sampling. Similar to a convenience sample, a voluntary response sample is mainly based on ease of access. Instead of researcher choosing participants and directly contacting them, people volunteer themselves. 
Ayan, for example, by responding to a public online survey. O mag, mag o online survey ka, mag-google form ka, and then advertise mo, mag-post ka ng, uh, uh, kumbaga, magpalabas ka sa Facebook, ng new groups, or sa campus, maglagay ka ng mga, tawag dito, ads, paper ads, sabihin mo, please answer the public survey. So kung sino lang yung nag-volunteer na sumagot, yun lang ang iyong magiging uh, sample. Voluntary responses samples are always at least somewhat biased. As some people will inherently be more likely to volunteer than others. So you send out the survey to all students at your university and a lot of students decide to complete it. This can certainly give you some insight into the topic. But the people who responded are more likely to be those who have strong opinions about the student support services. So you cannot be sure that their opinions are representative of all students. Convenience, voluntary. So ito naman in uh, graphical representation, sila ang sasagot. Selected. Of katulad nito, sila lang yung interesadong sumagot. And they do not represent the entire population. The third non-probability sampling method is purposive. Yan. Madalas din natin makita yan sa mga uh, thesis. Purposive. Pero iba yung ginawa. So, purposive. Ang purpose ko, uh, madalian ako. Kung sino lang makita ko, mali. Ang purposive sampling sampling involves the researcher using their judgment to select a sample that is most useful to the purpose of the research. So, you see, sabi nga nito, na probability, I use in qualitative research where the researcher wants to gain detailed knowledge about a specific phenomenon rather than make statistical inferences. An effective purposive sample must have clear criteria and rationale for inclusion. For example, you want to know more about the opinions and experiences of disabled students or persons with disability at your university. So, purposely, you select a number of students with different support needs in order to gather a varied range of data on their experiences with student service. So, ang target mo, the population ay persons with support needs, alam mo, hindi lang yung mga, hindi lang itong mga naka-wheelchair, yung mga visual, uh, merong visual impairness, yung malabo ang mata, hindi nakita, malabo ang pandinig, so, sila yung mga students with different support needs. So, you, you identify them and because of the, your research purpose, kailangan na sila ang maging respondents. So, purposive in the sense na depende sa purpose ng research. For example, ang purpose ng research mo is to determine the opinions of experts. For example, kumusta na ba ang uh, ekonomiya ng uh, Pilipinas? E sino ang interviewin mo? Kanino ka magagada ng data? E dito sa mga ekonomista, kaya minsan napapasin nyo sa news Sino-sino ang mga kinukuha nilang mga resource person? So yung Dean of Economics ng Ateneo o Professor ng Economics sa Lasal, Professor ng uh, Economics sa UP because they are the experts in their fields. So yan, purposive sampling. Hindi sa, ito ay purpose ng research. Yan. So, purposive, ikaw ang mamimili ng respondents na angkop dun sa iyong research aim and research objective. Last is snowball sampling. Ayan. This might be new to you. If the population is hard to access, wala kang listahan, snowball sampling can be used to recruit participants via other participants. The number of people you have access to is no balls as you get in contact with more people. 
sa so snowball. Di, di ba yung maliit na snowball kapag uh, magmula sa taas ng bundok habang uh, gumugulo, dumadami, lumalaki ng lumalaki. Yun, yun ang inspiration nitong so, snowball sampling. Example natin, you are researching experiences of homelessness in your city. And since the city has no list of all people, homeless people, so probability sampling is not possible. So you meet one person who agrees to participate in the research. So meron ko nakilalang isang homeless and then nag-participate siya sa research mo. And then she puts you in contact with other homeless people that she knows in the area. O nadagdagan na. At itong diyari, one, meron siyang na-recommend na dalawa. O di, meron ka na ulit na two. So ulit na three. Itong dalawang ito, meron pang dalawang kakilala. O di, dumadami. nag snowball o Para lang yung ano, multi-level marketing. One is to two. Or yung uh, nanganganak. Nanganganak ng ilang nanganganak. So, so these are the four. Uh, yan. Isa. May kakilalan dalawa. Yung dalawa may kakilalan tatlo. So dumadami na. Mula doon sa isang nakausap mo, all in all, nag-snowball na sa so total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yan ang snowball sampling. So, probability sampling, summarize natin. It is scientific method. Every member of the population has a chance of being selected. Mainly used in quantitative research and it produces results that are representative of the whole population. Simple random. Scientific sample using uh, intervals, stratified sample using different uh, strata or different groups and cluster uh, groupings then pero ang gagamitin mong sample ay mismo napili mong cluster. On the other hand, pag sinabi natin non-probability, it is a non-scientific method. Individuals are selected based on non-random criteria not every individual has a chance of being selected easier and cheaper to access but it has a higher risk of sampling bias. Lastly, it cannot be used to make valid statistical inferences about the whole population. Yeah, convenient sampling. So, sino lang yung may pinakamalapit sa research. Voluntary sample response. Pinada lahat ng survey. Ito lang ang nag-volunteer na sumagot. For positive sampling, meron kang uh, ang research mo ay may purpose. So, depende sa purpose ng research mo, yun ang iyong sample. And snowball, from one, nadadagdagan. Nagre-recommend na yung mga uh, na, na nabigyan mo na ng data gathering instrument. So, isa ng anak sa dalawa, isang dalawa ng anak ng tatlo so dumami ng dumami ang isang so for further research you can uh, go to uh, www.scrapr.com methodology qualitative quantitative research and sampling methods okay that ends uh, my presentation Do you have any comments and suggestions? Thank you for listening. Any comments? Yes.